Gentlemen, it's good to see you. Glad to be here. And uh, who asked the question of Coach Brown what his sales pitch was Me. for Clyde and I? So, just so you know, this place sells itself, in my opinion. Uh, I've been in this business a long time, like Clyde has. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you I've been blessed. I've coached some really special players and built a reputation on the backs of those really good players. But when Coach Chiswick first contacted me about this opportunity, it was one of those things that he was looking for some recommendations, right? I was employed at the time. Everything was going according to plan. Uh, I gave him some recommendations of some, some men I trusted. And uh, I told him, I said, Coach, three weeks from now, we may be having a completely different conversation. And, and fortunately, that happened. And when, when I had this opportunity come up, I knew it was a good decision. The longer I'm here, I'm realizing it's been a great decision. These young men, Coach Brown especially, and, and his culture, uh, the ability to be here and, and impact these younger players has been, uh, like Clyde said, it's been very refreshing and it's been a chance to reset. Um, the role, you know, and another thing is it's, it's important to be part of what I consider the best teaching staff in all of college football. And uh, if, if there's ways that I can contribute to that, that's, that's my goal. Um, the role is still uh, a little bit fluid, still trying to figure out exactly when, where, how, why, what are the things I'm going to be doing. Um, but as of right now, I'm taking that 10,000 foot view and I'm, I'm trying to fit in where I can get in, right? I can't, there are so, so many things I can do, but so many things also that I can't do. And most of those, most of those can't do's are with the players. Um, I can have conversations with those guys. It's just a function of can I be uh, close enough to them where I feel like I'm coaching them on the field. And, and that's a work in progress. I know Coach Brown uh, described and explained uh, the potential for some of that to change. And, and of course, we're hopeful. But my job is, uh, is to support our staff and our players as much as I can and help in any way that I can. So wh wherever Coach Brown points, that's the direction I'm going. So really excited to be here. So that was not a hard sell for him. And it was a, a really happy day when, uh, when our family decided to say yes. And uh, couldn't be more thrilled than, than being right here. Um, excited for this opportunity and for, for our team and for uh, the chance we have to really have a special year. So with that, any questions I'll, I'll take. Coach Brown said that you were good friends with Gene Chiswick. Can you sort of tell us a little bit about that relationship, how that really led here to Well, you know, it's, a, it's funny. It's, it was a little bit of love at first sight with Coach because uh, I haven't had a long relationship with Gene. Last spring, he was in Atlanta doing some recruiting, and uh, he stopped by our building. Uh, he was good friends with John Hope, who was our secondary coach when the, with the Falcons. And, uh, but Gene wanted to talk about pass rush. He wanted to talk about front play. And so John hooked me up with Gene. That was on a Friday afternoon in the spring. Gene was supposed to be there around 2. Uh, Arthur Smith walked by our offices at about 10 and said, hey, you guys are all out at noon today. Okay, so Gene gets there at 2. John Hoke introduces him to me. John Hoke walks out the door, and I spent the next seven hours talking pass rush with Gene Chiswick. And the, the conversation was just that. It was a conversation. It wasn't, I didn't clinic Gene. He had specific questions. I had some answers. I had questions for him about the college game. He had some answers. Uh, but you talk about meshing quickly, uh, that happened almost immediately. And, and a really good football coach, but an even better person, and that, that stands out right away. And, and I knew that that was a guy that I wanted to build a long-term relationship with. Uh, Ross Martin in South Carolina. I mean, the reputation is that you're coming in as a pass rush specialist. I mean, how do you kind of see, um, like, what do you see your day-to-day -day working with the team to improve the pass rush specifically? Obviously well, an area that the team needs work on facing. Right. You know, it takes all 11 of us, number one. It's, it, yes, we can make a quantum leap with what we're doing up front. And that's, that's primarily my objective. But it's going to take all 11 of us. It's going to be about, like, like Coach said, about getting them into some down distances that are favorable. So we're not convert pass rushing on second down and long. we got some second and extra longs where we know we're going to get the rush to pass. Or that's important. The other thing is, is, is building a, a pressure and coverage system that allows for some tight coverages that forces the quarterback to hold the ball an extra half account. 
Um, and then finally, it's going to be that individual technique and individual vision uh, of each player that we're looking at. And um, yes, like I said, I've been blessed. It's been a long, long time. I've coached a lot of really good players. Um, and every one of them was really good when I got old. Fortunately, we were able to play really good football together when I had them. Um, my job specifically with those pass rushers is going to be to add tools to their toolbox. Uh, I'm not going to try to remake any player. Uh, I believe that, football, or that pass rush is based on two things. It's based on effort and violence, and those guys that show those traits are the things uh, that I'm going to be looking for first. Uh, once we get past that, then adding what is, what is their go-to move, what's their best thing that they do, and then trying to find a way to get them to do that more. Uh, it's always important defensively to get your best guys doing what they do best most often. And uh, the biggest, the, the number one thing that we've got to figure out right now is which people need to be in the game, right? We, we need our, our rushers in the game when it's time to rush. How we deploy those guys, that's going to be entirely up to Coach Chiswick, but I can give him some input on who I think those guys are along with Coach Cross. Um, there are little things that we can do to improve in great ways. And... Right now, I'm, I'm just in the business of studying a bunch of tape on our guys and seeing how we can approach it. Um, offensively, uh, I think that there are tells that we can look for. There are different things we can look for offensively that are going to give us a little bit of a head start. Uh, when, that, when that all comes into focus, then I think that we can put that on the players a little bit faster. Any, uh, in terms of scouting the, the team, anything that stands out from the front seven that you really like that kind of jumps off the film that you've seen so far? For sure. Well, I've watched all the tape. Um, I've been here for two practices now. I was a, an observer uh, two weeks ago yesterday, or two weeks ago today. Um, we have fast where we need fast. We have explosive where we need explosive. We have big where we need big. We have violent where we need violent. We have uh, all of the things that we need from an ingredient. Now it's about putting it together in a way that uh, those guys can be effective, and the more effective rushes we can build, the more productive rushes will come. So I, I'm encouraged by the group. I know we've got uh, D tackles that are that are physical and that can create push. I know we've got some guys that can bend on the edges. Um, we just got to figure out which of those guys are the best guys to work together and get them working together a lot so they have that trust and have a feel for each other. Ted, Adam Smith with Inside Carolina. Um, if I've got it right, you. You were an analyst in Missouri there for, for a year. Um, and then you, I guess you went what, from, you left the NFL, went to the analyst role, then you jumped back to the NFL. Yes, like does that, the fact that you've made that move before, maybe this is the second time making the move from the NFL to the analyst role, analyst role does that give you some comfort or maybe even sort of an attack plan of, of since you've done it before and, and this is not you know a new thing? That's a really good question and it's, um, I know that when I went to Missouri, it was the first time Missouri had analysts. Uh, the compliance people were uh, basically right behind me the entire time I was there, um, which is fine. That's because that's, they wanted to do it right, and I understand that. The hope is is that this role and this, this title is evolving into something that's going to be a little bit more involved. Um, comfortability, I, I'm not going to necessarily say that that's the case just because there's not a lot of comfortability in this game right the, the, there are too many moving parts there's too many things on the line everything is an emergency at every level in this business if you're into it the way the men in this building are. so uh, yeah do I do I remember being on college campuses sure do I remember going back to Missouri and and having a role where I was uh, walking around with a clipboard instead of a whistle around my neck yeah I remember that but um, I don't think that's why I'm here. I think I'm here to help Coach Brown in any way I can. I think I'm here to coach, help the defensive staff in any way that I can. Um, I, and I am excited to, to really dive in and get as far down the road as I can, help our guys get as far down the road as they can. Ted, uh, Michael Co. WCHLChapelboro.com. You mentioned your relationship with Coach Chiswick. What was your relationship or what did you know about Coach Brown before uh, taking this job? Knew he was the only active head coach in our country that's a Hall of Famer. Knew that uh, I've evaluated a bunch of players that played under Coach Brown for a lot of years in the NFL, and they all played the right way. Smart, tough, effort-filled, great teammates. You could tell it on tape. 
um, knew that from a culture standpoint, uh, it wasn't a flag in the wind. It was this is what he believes in, and that's right up my alley. Uh, I think that uh, this this game is a diff it's difficult enough, but I know that because he is so straight down the middle that that gives us our best chance to be successful, and I wanted to be a part of that. How's it been working with Tim Cross so far? Tim's been great, um, very knowledgeable, has a great rapport with his players, really good communicator. They, they ask the right questions in the meeting room. Uh, he has been super welcoming. It's, it's never been, uh, you know, hey, you know, I'm here to be overbearing, because I'm not overbearing. My, I, what I'm here to do is support him. And uh, what I'm here to do is to help all of us get better if I can. Wherever I can, can have some input that gets us better, that's what I'm for. Uh, but Tim's been great to work with, and you know he's got a GA, and, and Cam's been great, and then working a little bit with the outside guys with with Bryson and, and with Chiz, been great. But uh, the biggest thing with Tim and I is going to be, you know, any relationship that's worth a darn is going to be built on truth and trust, right? And he's going to get that from me, and I know that he's going to that that he's going to give that back. So uh, I have no issues, and and I, I certainly hope that Coach Cross doesn't have any issues. Uh, having an extra set of eyes on his guys. Lieutenant C.L. Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. You said that uh, earlier on about the attractiveness of this job. How much or was it a factor of also seeing some of the other hires that, that Coach Brown and people that he's brought in, both with NFL experience and, and without, but just kind of the, the I don't know, the coaching acumen that he's assembled, was that also add, added to your, uh, your desire? It, it was certainly a check in the positive column, you know, um, because it, it's a small community, right? Football in general is fairly small, and then coaching is even smaller. And so you pay attention when things happen and when movement happens. Um, as, as the collection started to change a little bit here, it was impossible not to notice because they were all really good hires. Uh, did I, I didn't go out and recruit Coach Brown. You know what I mean? I didn't call him and say, hey coach, I see you're putting together something really special. I'd like to be a part of it. It was a function of my conversation with Coach Chiswick and then the opportunity presenting itself when it did. Is it a huge positive? Absolutely. Do I think that it's going to be something special? I really do. You guys good? Let me get one more. And then Tom Ashley from Inside Carolina. Matt said that he wanted you to be basically brutally honest with his players. What does that look like as far from your standpoint? Right now, it, it looks like me having some tough conversations with position coaches and with the coordinator uh, in the full staff meetings. When I get an opportunity to give my opinion, I'll give it. Uh, with the players, it may look like a drive-by every now and then. Right, I'll walk by and I'll, I might put my arm around a kid and, and say something and just keep right on moving. Uh, but uh, the film doesn't lie. We've, we've watched a lot, of, a lot of tape already. And when things jump off the tape at you, if you don't address them right away, then they tend to get cold and go away. So it's my job as that extra set of eyes defensively to, to stay current, to stay in the moment, and to try to get as much honest feedback as quickly as I can to guys. That right there, if I ask a guy how good he wants to be, and he says he wants to be great, well, I'm going to put that pointer on him, and I'm going to say, that's not great. You want, you, when you said you wanted to be great, you gave me the permission to coach you to that. And that right there isn't the way the best players do it, you know, when I put the pointer on him in the film room. And, you know, down the road, as, as we start evolving this position, uh, there may be more and more opportunities for that. But um, that's kind of my way. That's, that's why this has been such a good fit is brutally honest is the only thing I know. I mean, I, you can't, there's no dancing around Terrell Suggs and Elvis Doomerville and Courtney Upshaw and Cologne. I mean, you got to go right at them. And that's why I'm here. So I'll go right at them. Ted, along those lines, when you talk about watching all, I guess you, you said you watched the entire season from last year. Yep. You said you watched all the film. Are you trying then, because Mac said nine wins isn't good enough, and because, I mean, you know, 
the narrative is the defense was the weak link of this team last year. Have you tried to take an especially critical eye? Maybe critical is not the right word, but you know, really zero in on things to pick out to improve as opposed to say, okay, these are positive. Right. You know, like have you really sort of tried to to take that the, approach to, to the film study? I'm not the harbinger of death. <laughs> um, so that's not my role entirely, but what I will tell you is right now I'm trying to get the structure, trying to understand structure and concept and see how we can make those things even tighter and more clean for our players. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly point out the things that need improvement, but I also, it's important that I point out when they do things right too. You know, hey, we're a tick away from being really good right here. If we can just get your foot pointed in the right direction, if we can get your pad level down, to this one more level, then we're going to make a, a quantum leap there. But um, brutally honest isn't always, it, it's, I know this, positive doesn't always work, but negative never does, right? So I've got to give them a little bit of sugar with every bit of that medicine that I give them. And uh, that's just part of how I've operated for a long, long time, from the time I was an eighth grade coach teaching them how to put pads in their pants until the time I was coaching, you know, in Super Bowl 47. It didn't matter to me. And just like what, what Clyde said, which I thought was brilliant, coaching's coaching, right? And we're all trying to find a way to make each individual guy better. Because when that happens, when each individual gets better, then our team gets better. When our team gets better, then everybody holds each other to a higher standard. And that's the mode that we're in. And, you know, the, the natural progression of this program yeah, did we, did we do everything we could over the last month and a half to try to accelerate that? Absolutely. And I'm thrilled and honored to be a part of it. I hope that I can be everything that Coach Brown thinks I will be. All right. Good. Thank you, man.